Everybody, I'd like you to meet my dog, Wesley. And as you can see, Wesley is an extremely happy dog. And the reason that he's so happy is the big bag of dog food by his side from Tails.com. Tails.com are an online pet food company, and at the moment they feed over 85,000 dogs UK-wide. Wesley signed up with them at Tails.com by putting in details such as his weight, his breed, his activity, and Tails searched over a million blends to find the one that was right just for him. And also they'll even put it to his doorstep every single month so he doesn't have to worry about it. Hence, Wesley is an extremely happy dog. However, even though Wesley's food is tailor-made, the web experience he has when he logs in is the same as every other Tails customer. Moreover, the website has had to expand rapidly with the business, so it's kind of confusing and there are multiple ways to perform the same action. For example, this is all the ways that Wesley can add wet food to his order, and some of these ways are quite counterintuitive. The result is that when Wesley tries to use the website, he gets very frustrated by his experience. <laughs> He's so frustrated, bless him. The question I wanted to answer for this project was, by analyzing Tails.com's web data, can I improve the online experience of customers like Wesley? The problem is that web data gets saved as individual web hits, so these have to be chained together to make web sessions to understand how users are using the website. Um, but there's also far too many unique web pages within the raw data. So if we take May 2018 as an example, we have around 800,000 unique web pages. So if Wesley goes online and performs a six-page session, which is the typical length of a session, then there are 10 to the power of 11 such sessions he could undertake. And to put that in context, that's roughly the number of seconds in 22,000 years. So with this amount of variability, it's impossible to get any idea of what um, customer tendencies or behaviors are. So what are all these websites in the raw data? Well, it's a lot of websites like this, which as humans we can tell are probably the same thing. So we have Tails.com, there's a unique customer ID, and all these customers are changing their feeding plan. So the machine sees them as different websites, but we'd really like to put them together to one generic web page. So this was the first stage of the project, which is called data cleaning. And you can see here with each stage of data cleaning, I reduce the number of unique web pages until I reach a figure around 400. And then with that, I link them together into sessions. So now I've got these sessions, I want to have an intuitive approach of what a session looks like. So I designed an interactive map of the Tails.com website. So this is the website, and each circle is a web page where its radius is proportional to how often it's visited. So for example, here's the um, About Us site, here's the products. And now a web session can easily be visualized as a path through this website. So let's take the very simple example here. Wesley goes on to tails.com, goes to his pets page, has a look at his deliveries, and changes his next delivery to a time that's more convenient for him. And by looking at the sessions in this manner, it became clear that people were using the website for one of a few specific tasks. So let's go ahead and optionally color these pages associated with tasks differently. For example, help pages here will be turquoise. So now we have a way of visualizing sessions, but it's still not clear how we can represent them in a way that we can apply machine learning methods to. So web sessions are objects of variable length formed of units in a specific order. And in these respects, share many properties with the sentences we use from day to day. So to make it more explicit, I took each one of these web pages, associated it with a unique string, and then made a session by forming them into a sentence. So for the simple example here, Wesley starts on tails.com and moves to help pages, and it's a four-page session that can be represented by this sentence. And the beauty of this approach is now that I can use natural language processing, or NLP, which is a method um, that was brought about to find patterns in unstructured text, like news articles or blogs, and I can apply this to our web session data. And this means that we can query it um, very effectively. An example of such a query might be, can we tell which web sessions are likely to end on the help page? Because we might imagine if Wesley goes online and finishes a session on help, it's been an unsatisfactory web experience. So with this in mind, I trained a naive base classifier, um, which was three times better than picking at random which sessions end in help. As you might expect, simple sessions like this, where Wesley goes, tails.com, his dashboard, contact us, end in help. Because intuitively, we think if you go to contact us, that's strongly correlated with going to the help site. But the model even correctly predicts more complex paths. Wesley starts here, sign in, goes to his dashboard, looks at settings, tries to change his billing details, and is unsuccessful. This also is correctly classified as ending in help. The business application of this is, by finding web pages which are likely to end in help, we can intercept users before they get frustrated. For example, with a, a pop-up box or with a, a chat bot. And also, this would lead to fewer calls to the Tails customer support team uh, shown here with the headset. We're also using this analysis to redesign the Tails.com website, removing all these confusing paths. And the most important point about this project is that customers like Wesley have a much better online experience. Thanks a lot. <laughs>